Brookvale Park Master Plan Feasibility Study. Recommended options for the 11th of July 2011. Hi, thanks for showing an interest in the planning process underway to secure the future of Brookvale Park. I'm Adrian McGregor, Director of McGregor Coxall Landscape Architecture and Urban Design. We're developing a master plan to outline a framework for how Brookvale Park could be developed in order to generate money to fund future upgrades. After almost a year of community consultation, Council unanimously adopted 29 recommendations in response to community preferences for the future of Brookvale Park. These included the Brookvale Park remain the home of the Manly Warringah Sea Eagles, Council address issues such as game day parking and crowd behaviour and make the, the Oval more accessible to a wider range of users. It's clear that Brookie is an important icon for all of us in the Northern Beaches, but it needs work and the park could be made so much better. One of the other things he told Council last year was that he didn't want ratepayers to foot the bill for building a better Oval and park. The recommendations included the need to explore funding opportunities associated with development of the site and to review the plan of management to guide future development and minimise loss of community land. Earlier this year, Council resolved to appoint McGregor Coxall and our team. Our starting point was to review what you told us last year about the park, the importance of the green space, how you use the site and the values that you hold for it. We've already begun working to prepare a master plan which will sketch a big picture vision for the site. We will then test development options to identify the most feasible form of development, one that generates necessary funding but also protects as much of the green space as possible. We're currently working with key stakeholders so that we understand their needs and we can develop the best plan possible to give Brookie a new lease on life. In a few months time all the plans will be put on public exhibition and will be seeking feedback from the broader community. To date, we've identified several master plan options and uh, I'm going to talk through uh, two of them, the two recommended options now. The encompassing uh, design vision is that Brookvale Park Village be a place or a green oasis where people can play, work and live. So it's a mixed use centre that provides a heart to the Brookvale area. It also provides a landmark civic and retail heart for the Brookvale Corridor and it will harness the latest in sustainable technologies to create a mixed use village centre. Site analysis shows us that the centre has been developed over time with a series of ad hoc buildings that have developed in a laissez-faire style. There's currently an L shape of buildings that sit around the oval and the current uh, southern stand is not a good way to, to view the, uh, the games and nor is the Ken Arthurson stand in a good place to view the games. The Jane Tri stand is also will be in need of uh, uh, renovation in the future and in fact probably will need replacement in the future as well. There are a number of uh, houses and schools uh, around the site, or a school, and then to the southern part of the site is commercial uh, along Pipwater Road. Site analysis shows us uh, on a game day that there are issues with uh, people um, get queuing to get, gain access to the, to the ground, and that uh, causes uh, safety issues with people spilling onto Pitwater Road. Uh, the police control some of this, but some of it is currently not, not managed. This needs to be improved. There are also uh, traffic uh, issues related to uh, the game and also a lot of parking that occurs on top of the ground, which uh, disturbs the amenity of the park for people and also uh, causes damage to the, the grass in the, in the park. We've uh, had our arborists do an existing tree study and that study shows us that the, some of the existing trees are, are very important along Pitwater Road. Uh, these poplar trees are uh, of high significance and we uh, aim to retain those. Uh, also the trees on the flanking the um, eastern, western and northern 
sections of the oval are also important and we will want to retain those uh, as well. And then we need to plant more trees on the site and to reinforce these avenues. We'll talk through option A, the first of the two options. Option A uh, has a uh, basement uh, car park at RL13 on the southern end of the site. It also has another basement at RL16 on top of that on the southern end of the site. On top of that are uh, uh, retail uh, use uh, and also there is a, a loading dock area. At RL22 there is uh, another basement park parking. That brings us up to ground level. At ground level we have uh, retail on the western southwestern corner uh, with a beautiful north facing courtyard uh, looking back towards the oval. Uh, we have the existing um, Jane Tri stand retained and the extensions to that are completed. There's a new uh, hill that wraps all the way around the oval uh, to the um, east and the west and also to the north. The field has been moved slightly to the northeast. Uh, there is some commercial space at RL25 also on the eastern side of the site. There's a stadium uh, on the uh, eastern side and that is, uh, you see in that light blue colour, uh, that is uh, community space um, which is uh, leasable uh, by council. And there's also some stadium space in the lighter uh, yellow colour and then the um, sort of aqua blue colour is a, a large community room. Uh, to be used for the, by the public. There's a lovely uh, promenade or concourse that runs to the north of the two buildings and that's sun-filled and also protected from the noise of Pittwater Road. So that creates a ground level of uh, the village uh, atmosphere with an appropriate um, uh, response and setback to each of the adjoining roads. The park to the north will be upgraded, uh, a new childcare facility will be built underneath the stadium and so that will allow us to demolish a whole series of ancillary buildings including the little uh, toilet blocks. All of these uh, are the same in uh, both option A and B. There will also be an upgrade to the northern park with a new uh, children's playground and perhaps also some uh, basketball and netball courts around the outside uh, of, the, uh, of the park to give it a more multi-use um, set of uh, amenities. Moving up on option A we come to RL30 where we have a residential um, floor plate on the left hand uh, on the, uh, the western side and then uh, another floor of, of commercial. It may be that, uh, that a club that um, a rugby club may wish to take out that commercial space or else it would be uh, office space. The stadium you can see here, here on the right hand side which is the eastern side that's the covered seating uh, for, the, for the matches and also the amenities buildings uh, to the north uh, which would also serve um, the beer to the, to the hill or drinks to, uh, and food to the hill. Then we go to uh, level 33 and level 35 in the residential floor plates as we go up the floor. Next we go from uh, RLs 36 to 42, 38 to 44, going up level 3 to level 5. We end up uh, at uh, level 6 at RL 45 with the roof of the um, eastern building being at RL 47 and then the roof of the western building being RL 48. There is then a tower which uh, sits to the southwestern side of the site which is um, goes up to RL 63. It has a final height of RL 66 the current Ken Arthurson stand uh, RL at the top is, is 41. So we're a little above uh, the height of the existing Ken Arthurson stand. Of course in this scheme Ken Arthurson stand is demolished. Uh, also the southern stand are demolished and the 
uh, seating from those two stadiums is placed into the new stadium on the eastern side of the site. It's envisaged that this uh, program could be developed in two stages, with um, stage one being um, some of the park, the new stadium, uh, the retail and residential on the western side of the site, and then on the eastern side, uh, the commercial space uh, and basement coming along uh, in a second stage. This is a view of option A, indicating the, uh, all of the uses uh, on a match day. You can see the wonderful green horseshoe that uh, envelops the side of the hill, um, keeping that wonderful suburban uh, football character that Brookie has at the moment. And you can see the wonderful new stand with people uh, sitting under cover. And then in the background, the development along Pitwater Road and the north facing courtyard also uh, with the, uh, the trees and uh, a wonderful space creating the, the village atmosphere. This is a view from the southeast, a ground level view looking back at the scheme uh, showing the pedestrian plaza which is a new entrance into the park, the stadium in the background uh, and uh, the residential and commercial uh, development on Pitwater Road. In the background is the residential uh, building. Option B. Option B has again uh, shares the same basement at RL 13 as option A with a second basement at uh, 16 and then it has the loading dock which is the light yellowy colour and the retail uh, at RL 19 with a half level of uh, basement parking, then has um, a half level of basement parking on top at RL22. At ground floor it is identical to option A with all the same facilities. Also here option B is the same as, as option A uh, in terms of the um, commercial uh, floor plate on the eastern side and the residential there above the retail on the west and the stadium of course. Then as we move up we have RL uh, 33 and 35 in the residential level and then levels uh, 3 to level 8 running up the residential. We have a roof level uh, of level 9 at RL 59 on the uh, west, sorry, on the eastern building and then the western building has a, a rooftop RL of RL 60. So these are two buildings that are slightly lower than the um, option A, however they do have a larger um, well, they have a greater bulk against the Pitwater Road side, so they're both uh, both the, the, the long buildings are taller than option A buildings, but they both uh, achieve the same amount of uh, floor space. The reason that the floor space is included the way it is is to meet the financial targets, uh, which are uh, approximately in the order of, of twenty million dollars. Uh, which is still to be um, confirmed, but this uh, scale of development is what is required in order to uh, ensure that ratepayers don't fund uh, the future uh, upgrade and maintenance to the to the site, which is the um, the aim of the brief. Here's option B. You can see those two uh, buildings in the background. Um, the difference with option A is that option A did have the, the taller building on the southwestern corner, whereas this has two lower buildings, but uh, they're much uh, um, much bulkier. Here's a view of option B from southeast ground view along Pitwater Road. So we're now going to test these two options with the community and the stakeholders uh, and to allow us to get some feedback 
uh, on what people think about each of these two options and to allow or to inform the uh, decisions as we move into the next phase of the project. Thank you very much.